XP Pen's Artist 16 strikes an excellent balance between price and quality. It's a graphics tablet that delivers a 15.6-inch 1080p display, all for only £400 or $490 with no serious compromises for the price. Having used a pre-owned Cintiq 17SX for the past six years, and knowing that buying a replacement Cintiq was, well, financially impossible, I've delved into the route of alternatives. If you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure you have too. Getting started was incredibly simple. Plugged everything in and everything switched on fine. The cable's lengths are all quite decent, even dangling nicely off my propped up table. After installing the driver, the pen worked right away. That's a good start compared to other hardware I've tried. So, what accompanies the Artist 16 in the box? Everything you need to get started right away comes in the box. Except for those poor souls without an HDMI or mini DP input. One thing XP Pen has over other Cintiq alternatives is that their tablets come with two rechargeable pens rather than just one. This was a big relief for me because what if during a big creative session the pen suddenly dies on me? That would be a disaster if I was rushing towards a deadline, right? Not a problem. Just leave the second pen fully charged. The site advertises the pen will last 100 hours after charging. The amount of charge left on a pen is indicated by a color LED. Red means it's time to recharge your pen. These pens lack the traditional eraser tip like that of Cintiq styluses. What's replaced the eraser tip is the socket where you insert the charger. To compensate, you can pick either buttons on the pen or any of the express keys to toggle a razor mode, either on or off. The default is the pen's smaller button, which I think is the most convenient. At first, the lack of an eraser tip concerned me, but it's actually rather freeing. Eraser tips usually feel rather naff and would require clumsily spinning the pen like a drumstick. In Paint or Sigh, however, there was a bit of confusion as to why the eraser mode toggled the selection tool and not the eraser. All I had to do in the end was select the eraser while in eraser mode. The pen must be hovering over the screen for it to receive your button presses. If I try to toggle eraser mode while the pen is away from the screen, the Artist 16 won't receive that. Using the power cord, the stylus can be charged via your computer or a USB charger plug. Open up the pen holder to find 8 additional stylus nibs to replace the old ones and a clipper to grab the old nib inside the pen when being replaced. It's a rather cute and compact design, even if I would have never thought to open it without reading the manual or web page first. The pen holder weighs next to nothing, so be careful not to tip it over. Ever since I got the Artist 16 a few months ago, I've been using the same nib and there's been no signs of degradation or wearing away. The pressure functions beautifully. It's by far one of the smoothest experiences I've had trying to get the right flow from thick to thin when inking or painting digitally. I like to change brush size as rarely as possible, pressing lightly for the thin details, then pressing hard for the larger forms. And this is perfectly possible by setting the click sensitivity in the driver way up to heavy. Between programs based on what pressure curves you have already set up, you might want to make some adjustments to get the same feel across all your programs. There is no tilt sensitivity. The Artist 16 doesn't feel like it's negatively affecting my natural way of drawing, that is except for a few nitpicks which I shall dissect later. First thing I noticed turning the monitor on was that the contrast, brightness and colour is very good indeed. The colour required hardly any tweaking at all to look fairly natural and the backlight is consistent all round. There's no vignetting or dark patches in the corners. 
What's advertised on the site is a 1000 to 1 contrast ratio and it measures at 227 lux on my light meter with the backlight on full blast, which is decent for a small LCD tablet. For comparison, the LG Tele in the front room measures at 317 lux. The second thing I noticed was an odd sparkliness to the screen, which changed as I moved my head. I found it very distracting. It wasn't until later I realized this was the screen protector that was already on the monitor when it had arrived. The screen protector actually has a very nice paper-like texture to it, without being too rough. It wasn't the usual tablet-y feeling of sliding a felt-tip pen across glass. The screen lacks any anti-reflective coating, so the protector also reduces the reflections on the screen. But the protector's texture was also the culprit of the bizarre sparkliness. The little bumps combined with the parallax between the protector and the screen must be refracting all the tiny RGB pixels slightly, resulting in what I first thought was a strange colourful noise. Peel off the screen protector to expose the monitor's true beauty. I must emphasize though that the wonky white balance and the moray patterns are the camera's fault, not the tablets. In person, the monitor looks vibrant and lovely. Greasy finger marks should soon be expected to smother the Artist 16, but that's easily sorted with screen cleaner spray and the included cleaning cloth. With the choice being either an extra layer of cleanliness or a beautiful display, with reflections, I stuck with the latter. I'd suggest using the glove that came with the tablet, even though it didn't fit my hand, but the option is there and worth trying. Although it wouldn't be a good idea to reapply the protective screen after it's been gathering up dust for months. Stay away from me! The monitor runs at a fairly cool temperature for a very long time unless you work with the backlight constantly maxed out. It gets warmest on the top left corner, everywhere else is cool. The power supply box also has been nice and cool ever since I plugged it in. What wasn't very well designed however is the monitor's menu. The buttons are illustrated with some vague iconography on the side of the tablet where you can't read them. The power button itself acts as the enter button when in any other case it would have turned the monitor off like you'd expect. It's right above the menu button and has the exact same feel to the other button so I often mistakenly turn the Artist 16 off. How infuriating! If menu-y was an adjective, this would be the epitome of a menu-y menu. All the options you'd expect are there. The buttons can feel a bit wobbly and plasticky, and sometimes the monitor can take up to 20 seconds to turn on. However, these minor gripes take the backseat to the main experience of drawing and the excellent monitor. Measuring at 15.6 inches at a 1080p resolution, the screen is larger than a Cintiq 13HD's. While the Arta 16 is more deserving of the high resolution, it still feels a bit on the small side, with some text and icons appearing so small, it can be a challenge to click them properly. Because of the size though, I can also see this tablet becoming popular with creatives on the move to accompany their laptop. Thin and relatively light, this will fit fine in a rucksack to bring to work or university. There also exists a 10 and 22 inch tablet display amongst XP Pen's arsenal. You'll want to use the RGB controls to match the tablet screen to either your eyes or your monitor. The stand is made of cast metal and has some hard rubber ends so as not to scuff up your desk. It is firm and never feels like it's about to give way. The stand angle can be adjusted across a ridiculous range and stays put. Have a look here. These exposed screws are equilaterally placed in a square. So what I can do is unscrew the stand, rotate the stand, and re-screw the stand. Now you have a vertically orientated tablet without any need to recalibrate your pen. Going into the display settings, you can reorientate your desktop. Comic artists and magazine editors will enjoy having their work canvas fit in the screen better with their tall windows vertically orientated rather than have a small canvas pillar boxed in wasted space. The vertical format's very good for word processing and even sites like Twitter too, although I don't recommend it for YouTube and watching videos for the obvious reason. 
For the left-handed folks, you can rotate the tablet upside down so that the express keys are on the right-hand side. <laughs> The driver has options for what the pen buttons can do, although the choice is limited to different types of clicking or toggling the eraser. It's fair enough when you have 8 express keys to dedicate keystrokes to. The pressure menu has a slider to choose the pressure sensitivity based on how hard you like to press, and you can test it in this little window. In the express keys window, you can choose what each express key does and name them. They can take the place of your keyboard, assigning them to hotkeys recognized by your software. There's also a couple more interesting tasks the Express Keys can be assigned to do. This includes showing the desktop, switching applications, opening a program or website, and media playback options. There's even this unusual POP MENU, which involves choosing any one of those tasks with the stylus. It's worth having a standard system of hotkeys across all your programs, B for brush, Ctrl Z for undo, etc. That way, the express keys can be equally useful to all your programs. Let's see how the XP Pen Artist 16 works with a Mac, specifically a MacBook Pro 2015, which here is running OS 10.12. While this MacBook had an HDMI socket, I wanted to try the HDMI to Mini DisplayPort adapter, which does the job perfectly well. First time turning the tablet on, the colours may severely mismatch, but that is soon remedied by choosing a different colour profile. Apple RGB looked good to me. At first, the pen lagged by about quarter of a second, and it occasionally didn't register pen strokes. But after uninstalling potentially disruptive drivers, like Wacoms, and restarting the laptop, everything was fine and dandy, so be sure your previous tablet drivers are uninstalled. The first program I tried was Adobe Animate CC, and the experience was more or less the same as on Windows. I could do the small details and larger forms easily thanks to the smooth, delicate pressure sensitivity. The refresh rate of the Artist 16's monitor, named Digital on the display settings, was locked to 61Hz, which could have been causing vertical sync issues with the Max monitor, which runs at 60Hz. There is probably a fix I don't know for this, but I know very little about Max and it's not my MacBook to tamper with. On Photoshop CC, the brushes transitioned from thin to thick and transparent to opaque, just how I like it. The more recent version of Photoshop seems to have smoother lines than CS6, which is a rare case for Adobe. To put the Artist 16 to the test, I've used it to make a short animation. You'll see the entire process from the initial rough to the final composite. The scene's a contribution to the Mama Luigi Reanimate, which I shall link to in the description. Let's get started. Having done a rough breakdown of the animation traditionally, I wanted to keep the first two drawings in their traditional form, and then have the rest of the animation be in between then cleaned up in Toon Boom Animate. Not wanting to draw the whole body twice for the first two drawings, I wanted to copy the first drawing's body to replace the space in the second drawing. To do this, I put the first drawing on another layer above the second pose, and then rubbed out the head on the top layer so that the second pose's head would shine through. The front legs in the second drawing were done rough so they had to be traced. When first opening Toon Boom Animate, I encountered this bizarre problem where the calibration was entirely off, but only when using the drawing tools. The menus and other windows worked fine. How peculiar! Eventually, it dawned on me that the calibration somehow ended up being stretched across my two monitors. Even still, selecting Duplicate These Displays in Control Panel had no effect. This isn't the fault of the tablet, however, because it works perfectly fine with my two monitors on any other program. Just not Toon Boom, who is a picky little bugger. I've even read forum threads discussing the same issue happening with Cintiqs. In the end, the only solution was to work with a single monitor, that being the Artist 16 at least when using Toon Boom. 
When animating, I like to start off incredibly rough and fast, then gradually get tighter and slower before moving on to the final inking process. So this is where you can really see the Artist 16's ability to let you work as expressively or as meticulously as you like. In case you're wondering, Toon Boom Harmony is pretty much identical to the older Toon Boom Animate. The distance from the monitor to the surface the pen touches appears to be at least around 1.5mm, which is easy enough to get used to, it's just a matter of watching where the cursor or brush is going. Although, the real trouble with the parallax comes from calibrating the Artist 16. It's harder than it looks to get accurate calibration on this tablet, because the parallax makes judging where your pen is pointing quite difficult. It's not the end of the world, for there's always the undo button, and as long as I get that beautiful smooth line in the end product, I'm very happy. Colouring the two scans and painting the background were both accomplished in Clip Studio Paint. When colouring the caterpillar, I used Clip Studio Paint's Convert Brightness to Opacity trick, which is great for colouring scan drawings. Painting the background in Clip Studio Paint on the Artist 16 was great because with the vibrant monitor I was able to achieve the level of atmosphere and contrast I desired, while trusting the outcome of the colours. Again, please forgive the camera's awful portrayal of the screen, those abstract lines aren't there at all in person. After Effects is where I bring all the stuff together and add effects to make them all exist within the same world. I was more confident in the colour grading and overall result using the Artist 16 than if I had finalised the scene on my other tatty office monitor. You can't judge an animation that's at 1080p resolution on a 440x900 display. Here's the final result. You ready? There we are. All in all, the Artist 16 I'd say is on par with the Cintiq line only without the polish, but considering the price being £250 or $300 cheaper than a smaller Cintiq, the issues discussed hardly detract from the superb value for money. I was honestly expecting a rougher experience, but the reality subverted that assumption. Still, I would advise people to only buy a piece of gear like this if they're sure it will pay for itself in the future. Being able to produce better quality artwork, trust the colours of my photos, and being consistently used daily, including for commissioned work, I can safely say the Artist 16's already made its usefulness known to me. I can't speak for the other alternative tablet displays, for I've not touched them, but I can speak for the Artist 16. Well done XP Pen, I'm impressed by the price, the engineering, and the results.